Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at the MPS3K uh, portable power station by Hisolus. This thing is massive. It features a 4,500 watt hour battery, a 3,000 watt pure sine wave low frequency inverter, and a 1,500 watt MPPT solar charge controller. Uh, so in this video we'll take a look at the external features, we'll do some capacity testing, some heavy load testing, and then my favorite part, we'll take it apart and see how it's built inside. All right, so taking a look at the left side of the device, we have four 120 volt outlets. These are rated for 15 amps each. We have one large 120 volt outlet rated for 25 amps. This is a NEMA TT30R style connector, and I see this receptacle is UL listed. Next up, we have a series of circuit breakers. We have a two pole for the battery disconnect. We have a single pole for the solar or MPPT input. We have a single pole for the AC input and a single pole for the AC output. Can't really see too many details of these circuit breakers. The AC input and output do say C63, so I'm not sure if they are 63 amp or maybe that's just the model number of the breaker. Um, we'll find out more details of these when we take the device apart. Next on the right hand side here, we do have a 12 volt DC 20 amp receptacle. This is a cigarette or accessory style plug. We have a DC switch here on the side to turn the DC receptacles on or off. We have a series of USB connectors. We have two 5 volt 2.4 amp USB chargers. We have a blue quick charge connector. I think quick charge goes up to 12 or 15 volts, uh, depending if your device supports it. Your device has to support uh, the quick charge protocol in order for those voltages to be stepped up. Additionally, we have a USB-C. Uh, PD 60 watt connector here and then lastly we have two 12 volt 2 amp barrel connectors here on the right So taking a look at the bottom of the product here We just have a warning sticker should go without saying but just in case this does produce hazardous voltages You should not be taking it apart and then on the left We just have some specifications model number MPS 3k-4500 uh, The solar input range is 60 to 150 volts it doesn't specify if this is VOC, open circuit, or VMP operating voltage. However, based on this being 150, I'm going to assume this is uh, VOC open circuit. So you do not want your open circuit voltage to exceed 150 volts or even really get close to it. I wouldn't do 135 or 140 myself. And then the exact battery capacity is 4,520 watt hours. It is lithium ion NMC 12 cells in series. All right, taking a look at the other side of the device, we have a very large expansion port connector in the top left here. Uh, they do sell expansion batteries that are very similar to the design of this enclosure if you want to add more storage capacity. We have the AC input receptacle here on the top left, and this receptacle will take up to 35 amps input. We have our solar or MPPT uh, PV voltage input, again, 60 to 150 volts, a max of 1500 watts. And then we have our DC input, 12 or 24 volts, max of 10 amps. So this will be like if you want to charge it uh, from your car, cigarette lighter, or similar. So on the bottom of the right-hand side here is going to be the BMS of the battery. You can see we have two RJ45 connectors. These are RS485 protocol. And this BMS is actually very similar to some of the BMSs we see in the server rack batteries uh, coming to market these days. Um, we have our addressing switches here. There's a run LED, an alarm LED, and a state of charge indicator. You can see the alarm LED is flashing. I did run some tests on this already and the battery is depleted, which is why it's flashing. I need to recharge it. Otherwise, this RS-485, uh, if you do purchase expansion batteries, you would use a cable to link uh, the batteries together. Additionally, you can also use an RS-485 to USB adapter and connect this to your computer. I think there's a software you can use to view uh, parameters and voltages and whatnot within the BMS on your computer if you so choose. On the top of the device, we just have some instructions for powering on and powering off on the left. On the right hand side, we have the control panel. Obviously, we want to flip that breaker on first for the battery. So to turn this on, you'll press and hold the power button for about two seconds. And you'll hear it beep quite a bit. Display will light up. The display is actually on, but it's very dim because we are outside and it's bright out here today. So we do see the display is very similar to many of the inverters on the market. So I suspect uh, similar electronics inside. Press and hold to get into the settings. P1 is the inverter operating mode. Whether you want it to operate as a UPS or use, you know, solar first. P3 is your AC charger. So this does have a 1000 watt charger AC charger built in. 
Uh, so 100% would be 1000 watts, you know, 50% would be 500 watts and so forth. And then we have uh, P4, which is the buzzer beeping if you want to shut that off. When you're done with those settings, you would simply go back to P0, which says escape, press and hold function. Uh, so you can see we do have it powered on. There is zero volt input and zero percent load because we haven't actually done anything or connected anything yet. Additionally, our battery is depleted, so the first step we're going to do is go ahead and charge this battery. All right, so first we want to take a look at some of the accessories this came with. Here is the AC charging cable. You can see it's got this 30 amp plug here, and then this end will go into your device. I definitely do recommend plugging this end into your device first before you plug in the AC receptacle. Uh, these pins are recessed back a little bit in this connector, but I don't know, it just it seems very easy to accidentally insert a finger into here. So while I do very much like these connectors, actually, they're very nice connectors, uh, and they are solid connectors, but I would plug this end into your device first and then plug it into the receptacle. So they also do provide this little adapter here to convert to a standard 15 amp receptacle. And it actually says uh, 15 amps right there on it. So we have a input for the MPPT, PV input. We have two MC4 connectors here on the end. And same thing with the pins. You'll want to plug this end in first before you connect any solar panels. And then lastly, we have a very lengthy cable here for the DC charger for the car. Uh, so we've got, again, a similar connector to plug into your appliance, and then we've got the cigarette lighter or accessory port connector. And uh, all of this cabling is actually very, very nice wire. It feels very high quality. This AC connector does carry an ETL listing you can see on it. The cabling on the DC connector actually feels like silicone wire. I see it is 14 gauge with a 200 degree Celsius insulation rating. Uh, so if it's not silicone, it's very similar to it. It does feel silicone-like to me. All right, so now we're ready to charge our device. So I'm going to turn the battery on. Then I'm going to power on the device. And I'm going to leave the AC input breaker off for now. So remove the protective covering. Connect your AC power cord. And then once that's firmly connected, we'll plug it into a receptacle. And now I can turn on the AC input to begin charging. So now on the display, you can see we have 114 volts coming in. And we have the battery light going up, charging, and we can see the AC symbol is pointing to the battery. So our battery is now charging. I'll probably leave it uh, run overnight just to give the battery a little bit of time to balance, and then we'll begin our capacity test. All right, so according to the data sticker here, this is a 4,528 watt hour battery. So for the discharge test, I'm going to use this typical space heater I use. This pulls around 975 watts. So that should be around a 0.21 or 0.22 C discharge rate of the battery. Uh, of course, that will not take into account efficiency of the inverter, so it will be slightly above that. And since we're measuring the AC output side of this instead of the battery side, typically we measure the battery side, uh, I'm going to use this kilowatt meter here, and this will measure kilowatt hours. This is model number P4400. So we'll plug that into the AC output here going to plug in my space heater. So I'm going to turn off the AC input and turn on and turn on the AC output. So we can see our display started up, our heater kicked in. We're right at 120 volts. I'm going to switch this to kilowatt hour mode and uh, we'll keep track here and see what our final capacity is when this device shuts down. All right, so I've got the top cover of this device removed, and you can see there is a lot of stuff going on in here. But uh, one of the first things I noticed is this has a very large toroidal transformer. So if we take a look at the other side here, and these toroidal transformers, if I can pronounce the word correctly, are quite a bit more efficient than your standard E-Core transformer. So that explains why we saw some greater efficiency on the output. So additionally, one thing I noticed is how nicely bundled up these wires are the whole way across. Everything is held out of range from rubbing against something else, secured down nicely straight across the middle here. Um, so first on the right we have the main inverting board. So we can see our DC supply is coming off of the MOSFET transistors, and that's where it goes up in these two red and black leads. Uh, to what I believe is a choke, I'm not 100% sure on that. At which point it then enters the uh, primary winding of the toroidal transformer. And just trying to grab a shot at some of the part numbers here. That's the uh, control board on the top. 
And then down here we have the FET transistor board which converts the uh, DC into AC power. Taking a look at the other side we can see the block of circuit breaker secured to the front of the case here. Additionally this board is going to be our MPPT solar charge controller. We see two large inductors, two large capacitors, it's pretty much the standard style MPPT. Um, there's a series of replaceable blade automotive fuses here. Uh, so don't quote me on this, but it does appear they have these run in sets of two parallel, so 80 amps on each side here. Additionally, we have our terminal connection block. We have our PV input, positive and negative. We have our battery output, positive and negative. And we have our loads block, positive and negative. As I mentioned, we have our PV input. The positive is going through the circuit breaker. The negative comes directly off of the PV input port. We have two wires connected on the battery side. We've got a thicker one and a thinner one for both the positive and the negative. The positive is coming off and it's going to the top of the circuit breaker for the battery. Uh, the negative is coming off and it's simply going to the DC input on the inverter, which goes directly down to the battery as well. These two thinner leads are coming from the uh, DC input. Remember there was a DC charger on here. And they're just tying into the battery over here. They're not actually going through this charge controller. They're just using this terminal block to tie two of them together. And the wires coming off the load terminals here are going over to the switch for the DC switch so that we can operate the DC accessories without needing to turn on the inverter itself. Uh, so taking a look at the left hand side here, this is our 1224 volt DC input. Uh, and this must be the charging or regulation board for that circuit. Um, I don't see any communications cables that's going to tell this board how to charge, so I assume this is just a simple DC regulator. Then the positive and negative output comes off of that regulation board and that's where it goes over to the MPPT that I showed you earlier. So there are a number of wires coming off of this transformer here. And those are all going down to the uh, main control board here. Where we have the black one is labeled in neutral, the green is TX190, the brown is TX220, and the blue is TX250. So I don't know how exactly this is working. Maybe one of you guys can explain better uh, why there are three conductors coming off. If this is a phase shift, maybe this is 190 degrees, 220 degrees, and 250 degrees, or really how it's getting the 120 volts out of that. That is particularly interesting to me, um, but I am not overly familiar with how these toroidal transformers work. And we do have a small board down here for which the AC input comes off the circuit breaker, it goes through this board, uh, and then goes out to the main control board. I'm not sure what the purpose of this board is. Um, there are two large resistors on here and I do see a two pin control cable so I'm not sure if this is just a relay to turn the AC on and off or if there's some sort of uh, low voltage tap on this. So a couple of other things I wanted to point out here as I take off this ribbon cable. We do have a temperature sensor affixed to the heat sink here which goes straight up to the top of this control board and then we have another wire coming off here that's labeled fan which goes to control the fan in the front of the enclosure. So we do have some temperature protection and fan control here. This orange port here is the expansion battery port. And I did notice that this is not electrically isolated from the battery that's in this device. So the negative you can see is coming down to the main negative post here. This negative post is combining the battery negative, the expansion port negative, and the negative from the MPPT charge controller. So all of the negatives converge on this negative input here. The positive is simply going down and tying to the main battery positive. I can show you right here, you can see how they are both affixed to this heat sink. So that's the battery positive and that's the expansion port positive. So that tells us a couple things which are interesting. First of all, uh, we can pull DC power at battery voltage from this plug if we needed to. Even though this is an expansion port, it does appear we can pull power from this. Uh, it would still go through the BMS attached to the battery here, which is great. However, uh, this can be used as a standalone battery if you need to. Secondly, we know there is no regulation between the battery in this device and the battery you would connect here. So we do need to make sure the batteries are of similar state of charge before you connect an expansion battery to this port. Um, that BMS that's in there may do some sort of current regulation if you were to connect an empty battery to a full battery or something like that. Alright, so the last thing I want to look at from the top half of this device is to see if I can pull these circuit breakers back and see what the ratings are on them. Alright, so it's a little bit too tight to wiggle them out the whole way here. However, uh, uh, these first three here are Chan brand, and this is DZ47Z-63. It does appear to be a 63 amp breaker, so these two poles are wired in parallel, and it does carry a DC 440 volt rating. Also carries a DC 250 volt rating, uh, also polarized and appears to be wired correctly. 
Uh, the AC input and output are Tengen brand, uh, and they do appear to be 63 amp breakers. I'm not really sure why those are sized so high, actually, but... Uh, all right, on the bottom of this device, we have the battery bolted straight to the bottom. There does appear to be a plastic covering over it. I'm hoping I can get that off. All right, I was able to get it off on uh, the other side, but not the original side I started on. So, so I am told that these are cattle cells in here, and I do see a sticker down here that uh, confirms that. It just says uh, cattle, and it has a QR code. These batteries are laser welded together, there are no bolts. We see there is a hump in the center like usual for expansion and contraction. Getting a closer look we can see the balance leads are connected to some nickel strip which is then laser welded down to the uh, series connection bus bars. Uh, we do see this black wire is a temperature sensor and I see that's over here and it is affixed to the top of the battery with some of this tape you can see there. So uh, taking a look inside there we can see the BMS for the battery. Uh, there's the main negative connecting with two ring terminals. It's a very similar BMS that we've seen in some of the server rack batteries. Uh, so here's the balance lead. You can see that comes up and uh, connects there at the top of the BMS. And then we've got a large resistor here on the side, which may or may not be a pre-charge resistor. That is just a complete guess. I'm not sure what other function that would serve, though. So yeah, that's about it from the internals. This thing is built exceedingly well. I don't see a single thing to complain about on here. So we're ready to get this put back together. I need to charge it up and we'll do a little bit of uh, heavy load starting just to see where its limits are. All right, so I have a number of loads here that I'm going to use for testing uh, the surge capacity because this is a low frequency inverter, so I really want to push it and see what it can do. So I've got a seven amp shop vac a 1.8 horsepower air compressor, and then just my home vacuum cleaner. Now, it wasn't clear to me if I could use uh, 15 amps from each one of these receptacles or if the 15 amp limit was all four of these receptacles as a whole. The way this is labeled makes it sound like this is a total of 15 amps for all of these outlets. So the instruction manual says, for a single outlet, the maximum continuous amperage is 15 amps. So that means it sounds like collectively I can exceed 15 amps, I just cannot exceed 15 amps on a single receptacle. I fully expected to start this air compressor because of the low frequency design of this inverter. If that works, I'll start the shop vac, then retest the compressor. If both of those work, then I'll try to start the uh, vacuum cleaner. Now this will be a loud test, so I'm going to uh, turn the volume down here while I run this. All right, here we go. Uh, so that did start the air compressor, but I did see the fault light on the display it did light up for a brief second. That was incredible. I did not think it was actually going to start all three of those appliances like that. Now the red fault light did flick on briefly for a second and then it shut back off. Uh, but it was powering all three of those without issue and it even started up the vacuum cleaner once both the air compressor and the shop vac were running. Clearly the low frequency inverter in this appliance has a huge starting capacity. The last thing we need to touch on is price. The MPS 3K sells for $3,595. That's a sale price that actually just started today. Additionally, you can use my discount code for an extra 5% off which brings the price down to $3,415. And that does ship free, at least to my location it did, and I assume most of the United States is the same. There will be a link down in the video description if you would like to learn more along with that 5% discount code. All in all, I really have nothing negative to say. It's built exceedingly well in a heavy-duty steel case with a massive starting surge capability. Uh, the only thing that I really think is worth noting is the AC input cord and those pins that are somewhat exposed. You'll want to be very, very careful using that cable. Um, I would definitely make sure, like I said before, to plug the cable into the appliance first and then plug it into the receptacle. If you have one of these devices or you decide to purchase one and you want to leave your experience down in the comments section below, please feel free to do so. Hit that like button before you go and thanks for watching.